vast amounts of stratus and stratocumulus layers at about 2,000 feet across much of Texas, streaming north. And let's take a look at the precipitable water. This is how the loop looked over the past day. And look at that moisture flow northward. First, we get cyan colors, which means one inch precipitable water. And then the purples show up, which indicate an inch and a half. And that's where we're at right now. But you can see as the rest of the afternoon and evening goes on, here comes the dry air originating from the southern Rockies. So that'll clear us out. We'll get a little bit of wraparound in North Texas, Dallas, Fort Worth area. And that'll be it for here. Let's take a look at what's happening elsewhere around the country. The surface analysis at this hour showing that southern stream system entering West Texas. And we talked a little bit about that yesterday. That originated from this area of northern Baja, California. And the previous day, it was out west of the California coast. So now we find that in Texas, we've got the tail end of that old cold front lifting northward into San Antonio, Austin, and San Angelo, giving us this very narrow wedge of maritime tropical air. That's the pure tropical air mass source coming from off the Mexican coast. North of that, we've got this intermediate tropical air mass. It's kind of not really cold, not really moist. It's in between. And then we've got this cooler air mass residing up to the north with low 60s and 50s. Across the East Coast, we have this 10, 22 millibar high covering much of the East Coast with cool intermediate modifying air. And then up to the north, we've got this new Alberta Clipper coming south. That's a push of very cold air. You can see freezing rain coming down there in southwestern North Dakota. I don't see any other wintry precipitation back in there, but there's probably the potential for a few isolated snow showers back there in North Dakota. And that's being driven by this 1023 millibar high in Saskatchewan. Up to the north, not very much going on. The sub-zero temperatures making a very slight return right there east of Victoria Island. And then we've got this large, very broad, but not severely strong high pressure area, 1026 millibars. You can see the temperatures in that are modest, 40s and a few 30s there. Nothing like the sub-zero temperatures we had last week. So Alaska, Yukon probably seeing a modifying trend. Some concerns there at SPC with a enhanced risk for Oklahoma, Texas, Louisiana. You can see the severe thunderstorm watch box already for the Interstate 35 corridor. And then we had this new tornado watch just come out at the time we recorded this. They've got some concerns about that. College Station up to Fort Polk. The mesoscale discussion for that tornado watch. Focusing on the strong warm air advection. Dew points up into the low 70s. Increasing 0 through 3 kilometer cape. And SRH also on the increase. And they're looking for that 50 knot low level jet to become established and with the upscale growth, some possibilities of rotating storms within that complex. At the time we record this widespread cap removal. So we're getting numerous complexes of storms, some of it up north and some of it down to the south. And what's interesting is uh, remember we went over the model comparisons. The NMMB, which I identified as one of the weak performers, actually kind of got this right. So I'm kind of surprised. It went with a lot of development down there near Interstate 10 and lifted that north. And that's probably going to shut down some of the area in between by cutting off the moisture supply to a certain extent. A good way to see that play out is on the significant tornado parameter. Now, I'm not looking for the peak values, but I'm looking for the boundaries that start showing up because that's a fairly interesting way to identify cold pools. So here we see these clusters of thunderstorms with cold pools being laid down right there. 
around the College Station area, and you can see those cold pools grow. So that is going to mark the limit of the moisture supply, the inflow, and degrade it further to the north. Now, some of the storms up further north may be a little bit less affected by that. Also, if these cold pools are shallow, there could be continued moisture supply over the top. And you can see the cold pools from that activity around Dallas come together. So this map here suggests some storms in this area here and a separate cluster down to the south, which is what that tornado watch is for. So I haven't even looked at the precip, but I have a rough idea where that's going to be. So let's run that through. So we can see right away that a lot of the stuff is actually elevated, but some of it is laying down the cold pools. And there's that complex right there. This is about 23Z. So that's being laid down right there, the other stuff being laid down in the Dallas area. And you can see how those things evolve. Probably a few weak bell echoes and that stuff. And then we have this complex coming together in central and southern Oklahoma after dark. And we can see that that grows out of this complex around the Wichita Falls Vernon area this afternoon. So chances are that's not going to precisely play out the way the models are showing, but you know, we'll keep an eye on it. These cells, for instance, and we'll keep an eye on this one. And of course those, and then the stuff down to the south. And of course the trusty visible satellite imagery, we got to look at that. Because if things are going up in the Vernon area, it's going to show up on here. Well, it's still kind of early in the convective day right there, but you can see some moderate towering cumulus going up right there around Knox City, Seymour, getting that strong solar heating there near the northward tip of that moist sector. And there's the animation right there. Gradually eroding that cloud material, but looks like maybe indeed there could be a few towers going up in the Vernon area in a couple hours. We'll keep an eye on that there. And then we have the more established stuff moving on off towards the east. So the surface reflections, let's take a look there. You can definitely see the delineation between the air masses going out to the south. Hondo, Uvalde, Catula, very warm conditions, almost 90 degrees there. So that is the tropical air. And if we follow that to the north, it looks like some of it extends all the way up towards Eden Junction. So that's going to mark the warm front. And I'm going to draw it something like that right there. I believe that's about where it is. And then we see the dry line punching out. That's already past San Angelo, coming up on the area just northwest of Del Rio. Then, of course, we have that other boundary to the north. Cooler air north of that boundary right there. And that's about roughly where it is. You can see 69 there at Texarkana versus 62 at Dequeen. Likewise, 70 there at Greenville versus 67, 66, 62 at Oklahoma City. And in between right here, off the cap rock, a little bit of heating being suggested by the satellite data. So it looks like that dry line punching out, something like that. Don't really have much data off the cap rock. Here's another chart that shows that data hole there. That's a huge problem. Can't believe nobody's done anything about that. And this is certainly where you're justified using the model data to fill in the gaps. So there, yeah, moisture nose right up there towards Windthorst up to Knox City. And if we look at the theta E, that'll give us some of the best potential for thunderstorm generation. And that is indeed focusing on that area around Crowell, Knox City, and back to the south of Wichita Falls. So after a 30-minute block of recording and editing, 
we're getting a little bit of an update here. That's that region of northwest Texas around Crowell Knox City. And we see a couple little clusters that could develop into storms. They're shearing off as the afternoon goes on. So we're not 100% sure those are going to develop. But, you know, there's a couple candidates in here that we would watch. And possibly in the next hour or two, there could be some development right there. So that could be the beginnings of that MCS indicated by the model data. So if nothing happens and the towers start looking a lot like this, then that will indicate that storms are unlikely. So we shall see. And a quick check of the radar data shows some of those elevated cells do have a strong multicellular look and a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings. One up there near Bowie and another out in the Garland, Wiley, Lake Levon area. And then further to the south, everything looks very elevated and disorganized. And there's the cluster further to the south. This is the one that the NMMB nailed and the other models missed. So it's a giant complex of disorganized storms moving northward. And I would say that's got a pretty good chance of having an impact on the moisture supply up to the north. And there's the Houston radar. Not really anything going on at this moment, but the storms are more isolated. So the cold pools are mostly going to focus on that area right there initially. Whereas the air further to the east is not as disturbed. However, the problem is that there is just not much heating. The sun is just not getting down there. So that's reducing the instability somewhat. However, if an isolated storm does get going, it will have some potential for rotation. And the trend with the high resolution rapid refresh models is for that cluster to move northeast with a few stronger storms on the tail end to the southeast. So that may be where some of the potential for stronger storms are expected. Then for the storms in northwest Texas, a few possible candidate cells going up there south of Vernon. We're picking that up on the Frederick radar. Got to go up to the higher tilts to see the initial development. See, there's a speck right there. That may mean something. It may not mean anything. However, that's up at about 20,000 feet, and that's where we usually find the initial development. So that's going to be near Guthrie. That could be some elevated stuff moving eastward, and later it may intercept the moisture. So a little bit going on there. Then, of course, we have this stuff that may be far away enough from the I-10 activity that may start developing and moving northeast. And that may have a window of opportunity for some severe weather. And the mesoscale models have certainly been hinting at that this evening. And some possibilities further out to the west that are kind of a wild card. So this is where I turn things over to you and leave the situation in your capable hands. Hopefully I've impressed enough on you over the past few months where you can pick up some of the tools that I've been using and apply that to the situation this afternoon. So now's the time for me to get this uploaded so you can get to it as quickly as possible. I hope you all have a great weekend. Take care and we will see the supporters on Monday. And here's how to become a supporter. And everybody else will see you on Tuesday. Take care. Bye-bye.